Um, our final speaker, I guess Wake Hartman isn't going to show up. So, Mike Pompeo from Wichita. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you all for coming out today, and I appreciate this opportunity to get a chance to, to speak with you. Um, it is great to be back in the hometown of my mother. Uh, my mother uh, was born was born in Beloit, but at about age one, moved to Wellington. <clears throat> she and her uh, nine siblings well, were all raised on 902 North Olive, so within a stone's throw from here. Uh, maybe the current owner's here today, if so, I, <clears throat> I'd love to get a chance to, to, to meet them. Uh, I, I grew up in Southern California, but I've got uh, deep ties. My, my grandfather was a, a sheriff in, in Mitchell County, uh, and I've still got uh, over 100 plus cousins and aunts and uncles here in the 4th District of Kansas. Uh, I spent my summers at my aunt's farm, my Aunt Joanne's farm out in, uh, in Winfield, just north of Winfield in Cali County, and, and learned a little bit about agriculture, uh, but from a 13-year-old's perspective, which is uh, late labor, which is cheap labor. Uh, and, uh, and, and I look back on it now, I talk to my Aunt Joanne, she says, you thought you were helping, but uh, you were really just mostly getting in the way. Uh, it, sure, it sure didn't feel like that for my, my brother and I. Uh, I. I've never run for office before. But about uh, a year and change ago, I came to think that our country was fundamentally losing its way, that the relationship between government and its people uh, was, was about to change in a way that I didn't think made sense for Kansans and didn't think made sense for folks all across the country. And so I decided to, uh, to enter this race for Congress. Uh, the, the experiences I bring are, are, are pretty broad. Uh, I went to West Point and served in the Army following that for about five and a half years. Uh, the first three years were in Germany. I was in a cavalry unit. I was an armor officer. Uh, we patrolled what was then the East German and Czech border. And then I came back. I was stationed here in the States at a couple, three different places, Fort Carson, Fort Knox, and Fort Hood, uh, each, for, uh, each for short periods of time. Uh, that experience leading soldiers was like, uh, like no other. Uh, I loved every minute of it. I had great, great Americans who were working with me to build a team uh, and was a very small part of our national security apparatus during the Cold War. And I think that experience is very relevant uh, here, in t here today where we still face lots and lots of challenges, uh, folks who want to do us harm here in America. Uh, I got out of the Army and went to law school and practiced law for a couple years uh, and then had a buddy who was living here in Kansas and that's what brought me back. We, uh, he was a West Point classmate of mine and we decided to start a company. It ended up being in Wichita and it was aircraft parts manufacturing. And I ran that business for uh, about 10 years. Uh, we, uh, we grew it from scratch into a business that uh, had over 400 employees. Uh, we made airplane stuff, machining, manufacturing, welding, job shop stuff. Uh, pretty typical for the aircraft manufacturing uh, businesses there in, in Wichita and Central County. Uh, I left that business in 2005. Today I'm in uh, another industry very important to the 4th District. I uh, service and sell equipment in the oil and gas industry. So our customers are uh, drillers and producers. <coughs> drilling rig breaks, you call my company, Century International, we'll come fix it for you. And uh, have been involved in that for three or four years and have really come to understand the challenges that um, small independent energy producers, both the producers and the drillers, face here. Uh, I'm married. I've got one son, Nicholas, who uh, if you come to our parade, you'll see Nick out there with his red hair uh, telling folks about his dad. Mostly good things, I think. Uh, it depended on the day. Uh, we, uh, my wife and I have been very involved in our church at East Minster. Uh, we taught fifth grade Sunday school and I've been a deacon there. We, we, we watched. We watched when health care passed and we knew how hard that would be make it to create jobs in South Central Kansas. I stare at cap and trade, a piece of legislation that will be devastating uh, to the agriculture community in the 4th District of Kansas, devastating to the oil and gas industry here, uh, and devastating to consumers with electricity and energy uh, costing a whole lot more. Uh, it's something that uh, we need to send uh, leaders prepared to really fight hard and work hard to make sure it doesn't happen to people here in Kansas. Uh, cap and trade would put an incredible burden on trying to grow the very small community we're in today and all of the small towns uh, all across south, south central Kansas. It really impacts us an awfully lot more uh, than it does the folks who are on the coast. And it's the folks on the coast who, frankly, uh, put us in a lot of the debt place we are today as well. When you, when you look at what happened in our major financial institutions over the last two and a half years, and you contrast that with what happened in our local banks, banks here in Wellington, banks in Mount Hope, banks in, in 
Pennants and Coffeeville. Those were small banks that made good loans to people they knew and did what bankers are supposed to do. They made loans to people who were likely to repay them and who they knew and who were good risks. And today they've got regulators <coughs> causing them to tighten credit like we have not seen in 50 years and like we cannot tolerate for even another couple of years. Uh, we've got to fix that. We've got to let small and community banks get back to the business that, they, uh, that they're in and, and let them go do that. And while the president may say he's encouraged them to loan, I promise you if you talk to them, they'll tell you the regulators are discouraging it at every turn and in every way. And it hurts. It hurts agricultural folks. It hurts small business owners like myself. Um, we, we've got to fix it. And uh, we've got to solve the problem of these enormous too-big-to-fail banks turning to the taxpayers when they take risks and fail. And we've got to return power back to the small banks um, who are doing the right thing and, and making good decisions. I look forward to talking to you this afternoon and trying to answer your questions uh, as best I can. Uh, and I, again, thank you for the opportunity here this afternoon.